welcome, please, for Sheikha Kulkarni. Okay. okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for the introduction, Steve. So within the next 30 to 40 minutes, I'll be talking about our approach to digital transformation. So before I do that, let me introduce the Open Roads community. So this Open Roads community started, I think, one and a half years back. And the main reason or objective of the community is really to work collaboratively with, with the participants to deliver what we call Open Roads Framework, which allows us to address these challenges and opportunities that digital brings in to all enterprises and understand the common challenges and put together a framework. So, okay. so there are three parts of that. Our main mission is really to put together best practices. So currently we have 600 plus active members in the community. It started with majority of the telecom operators. So we have all European operators participating participating and actively leading the open doors community. We also have a number of consultancy organizations, product vendors, as well as some universities helping us to drive this transformation. The road stands for real time, on demand, all online, DIY, and social. So these are the characteristics that we look to deliver the customer experience, which is real time and on demand. So that's really the starting point. So this experience is enabled by transforming your operations, delivering great operation services, digitalizing your business processes, simplifying your back office, which is achieved by using digital technologies like big data, analytics, and, and others. So we see that these three things working together to drive the digital transformation. Now these two words, digital transformation, you are going to hear a number of times in the next two, three days. And that's a common thing across all, all enterprises, across all industries. But if you ask what it means, that people will have different views on that. Some people will, some people will say it's all about customer experience. For others, it's all about agility. For others, it's all about technology, using big data, real-time mobility, cloud to drive your business processes, simplifying your operations. And for others, it's just a way of working. But as you see, increasingly, digital transformation is now business transformation. So that's really the driving for all enterprises that is becoming a major focus. So when we look at the open roads, we, we realize that these are all things we need to consider when you look at the digital transformation. So it's really a holistic approach that will enable enterprises to move into the digital world. So the first question is really that, do you have the vision and ambition to become digital? Because as I said, digital means so many things, but in every enterprise, digital means something. Like as we saw with Skipple, they have clear vision in what it means to digital. So once you have that vision, you also need to know where you are today. So in navigating towards your journey, you need to know where you stand today and how you are going to achieve that. And I'm sure almost all the enterprises now have some sort of digital vision, they know what it means to them, and they also have some plan in, in becoming digital and taking that particular journey. So in last one month, one year or so, we put together what we call digital mastermind. That's our transformation framework that we work with, likes of MIT, as well as a number of consultancy organization, but most importantly, the operators, service operator, telecom companies who Use, who share their experiences and their practices to put together a common framework for us. Hopefully it comes up. Yeah. So there are five major blocks or major components of the framework. The first one is vision and ambition. So this is where we use MIT's what they call next generation enterprise model. So this model allows you to define what it means for you as a, as a digital. And there are a number of dimensions to that. And I will cover those in next slide. But that's really the starting point of your uh, transformation. So you need to define what, you, what it means to you, what you are trying to achieve. Once you know that, then the next capability or next block is really about maturity gaps. So this is where we put together what we call open roads maturity model. 
which covers six different dimensions, right from your strategy and vision, focusing on customer centricity, using data as well, at the same time looking at the digital culture and skills, as well as technology. So we believe that those six dimensions cover really the maturity model that every enterprise needs to uh, understand in terms of where they are. And again, I'll talk more about that in more detail in terms of uh, those six different dimensions. So once you know where you are, once you know where you want to go, then the next three blocks are really trying to help you to drive that particular journey. So here we think about customer experience that drives your uh, design thinking, that drives your uh, delivering your, your opportunities in terms of the delivering the customer experience. And again, see, uh, the example that uh, we just saw in the previous, like, previous slide, a previous presentation can be quite useful and I'll talk more about that. But that is really fo focusing from outside in and looking at the customer experience and how you are going to achieve those, uh, those journeys. And this is where the operation realization comes into place. So in last six months, we put together a number of capabilities, both from business and technology perspective, in order to de deliver those particular uh, opportunities, in order to make those uh, journeys re realized. La but last bit is about using the balanced digital scar to, s to measure your progress. So based on your transformation journey, how you are making that progress, where you stand today, so these are the five major blocks that we believe that are really required to cover the entire digital transformation. So let's start with the vision and ambition. So there are two main aspects, and if you think about your own enterprise, these two dimensions, you can see that they are critical. One is about customer experience, which is a vertical line, and the next one is operational excellence. So these are the two major dimensions that are required to be used for any transformation, but certainly for digital transformation. So these two, these two dimensions gives you a number of models, but let's start with the first one, a supplier. So these are the enterprises which are traditionally focusing on delivering services that they are very good at. So they now either sell those services or products through directly or through, through different channels. They have been very successful over the number of years because they have certain product that, is, uh, that allows it, them to capture a certain market. And many large enterprises fall into that category. Certainly lar large telcos certainly fit that particular bill. But increasingly over the last number of years, they have been under pressure, both from revenue perspective, but as well as customers. They have been pressurized or put under pressure by over the top players. So certainly they are still valid, they still have large number of customers, but because they have been evolved organically over the number of years, they have still a lot of silos. Their business processes are scattered across the enterprise. Uh, they still have very siloed architecture. Their product lines are, their organization structure is based on the product lines. So you can see there is a lot of duplication in, in terms of efforts and people and processes they may not be heavily focusing on customer experience because traditionally they have that large, they have that large scale which allow them to capture and hold on to those customers. So these are the companies we call as supplier. The next one is the modular producer. So these are the enterprises which have now adopted the digital technologies. So they started exposing their capabilities as APIs. They are now participating in the wider ecosystems. So they know that they cannot just stand on their own feet, they need to participate, they need to create collaborative partnership with others, maybe through other industries. So these are the model producer. So think about PayPal, for example. PayPal has got a one good product, but the way they have delivered that product allows them to participate in other, other ecosystems. So they don't necessarily own the ecosystem, but they are important part in, major, in lots, lots of other ecosystems. The third one is omnichannel. So these are the companies who are focusing on customer experience. So they, be, they are the customer champions. So the net promoter score is the one thing they are driven by. And the last one is the ecosystem drivers. So these are the enterprises, so likes of Amazon and other platform players who have focused on the customer experience. So they know they, how to deliver that great customer experience, which is real time, which is context aware. But at the same time, they are operationally excellent 
because they have transformed their processes. They use technology to simplify everything that they, what they do. They are operationally excellent. So they have these two things that are essentially allow them to dominate that space. So these are the players who are, who they own the ecosystem. And so they participate with others, they capture the, uh, the customer segment from other segments, and they are most importantly are able to cut across a number of industries. So things about uh, Amazons and other platform providers, they're getting into the retail, they are already into the logistics. So you can see the, they, they are able to do dominate their ecosystem, but they are also able to play important part in other ecosystems. So these are the four enterprise models that we believe that will allow you to define what you want to be. Whether you want to be a supplier, or whether your ambition is to become an ecosystem player, or you are happy to be omnichannel. So I, before I go to the next slide, I would like to do a quick survey. Based on where you are today in your enterprise, please raise your hand if you believe that you are in a supplier domain. So you, you have core service that you deliver. You may not be operationally great, but you still have ma large scale of customers. So please raise your hand if you believe that you are in that particular domain. So I guess we have only one participant or maybe two who are in that domain, which is great news, because either now the rest of participants are either delivering great customer experience or maybe operationally excellent. So let's look at the omni-channel. Please raise your hands if you believe that that's the viewer, you, you are in the omni-channel. So I can see a few hands there, more than 10 or something like that. Ecosystem player. I guess we just have one or two. And what about modular producer? These are the ones who are operationally excellent and have plug and play sort of services, so few. And others are, I'm not sure exactly where you guys are, but that's not very uncommon because many organizations will fit in somewhere here and there. We had similar survey with our members, I think last year. And as you can see, more than 50%, 52% of our participants, they believe that they are in the omni-channel uh, domain at this point in time. And that's pretty standard, particularly if you look at any customer-facing organization, customer-facing products like telcos, and only 7% are ecosystem drivers. So the next question is really, why does that even matter? And it matters really quite a lot. It's very important that you need to know where you stand today. So this slide really gives you why it matters. So let's start with the silos and spaghetti, which is our supplier model. So these guys are large enterprises, but they are very siloed in terms of both their organization, but also processes. And MIT has done some survey with thousands of enterprises across the globe. And what they found was quite surprising and interesting. 51% of their participants <laughs> fell into that particular category. The next thing is that 5.1, particularly the minus sign is important. That is the percentage point. These guys are minus 5.1 percentage point low than the average within their industry when it comes to net margin. So let's say an example, if an enterprise, let's say telco, if their net profit margin is at, let's say, 12%, the guys in the silos companies within the te telecom would be around 7% net profit margin. So if you think about in terms of your net profit margin, that's a significant drawback if you are in the siloed domain. But if you are able to expose your capabilities, if you are able to participate and become much more plug, plug and player and become, start becoming inter industrialized, then suddenly your net profit margin goes up to 4.6 above the, above the average. But most importantly, one is the omni-channel. So what we found was that the omni-channel, and there are 15% of those, their net profit margin is less than the average industry which they operate, and that's 3.6. And that's very interesting. So you become a customer champion, customer love you, and you love them, but that doesn't necessarily translate into the uh, great operational excellence. But the last one, which is almost everybody wants to be there, is the future-ready enterprises. These are the digital companies. These are the digital natives. And they're still 23%, and that is increasing uh, gradually. So they can, you can see 16, point, 16 percentage point above the uh, industry average. And that's really significant. So if you are a telco, for example, and you are siloed, spaghetti, traditional company, and somebody over the top 
Facebook, WhatsApp, and others are coming and started providing communication services, the starting point would be their net margin will be 16% above, 16% point above than you. So you can imagine within months and years, they will transform the industry completely and, and essentially they will force you to remain in the silo and spaghetti until you vanish. So this is really important that you need to know where you stand today and what it takes to move that, to take that particular transition. And you can decide which way you want to go. And I'll talk about the, the transformation models. But let me see. Oh. Sorry about these slides. I don't know what's exactly happening. Yeah, let's focus on this first. So there are a number of ways you can transform. So at very high level, you can see at least four pathways. The first pathway could be that if you are at the silo and spaghetti, you start becoming industrialized. So you start exposing your capabilities, service enable them, everything as a service, expose your APIs, start participating in the other ecosystems, create those partnerships. So suddenly you can start becoming industrialized. And then you start becoming much more ecosystem player by looking at the data, customer centricity. But while taking that path, which really runs from silo spaghetti industrialized to become future ready, you see that you are going to lose the focus on customer experience. So you may become operationally excellent, but your NPS is going to go down. So the other pathway is to move up, which is from silo to become omnichannel player. So start exposing, start delivering services across the different channels, become omnichannel. So you can see that then you become customer, your NPS starts increasing, but then operational excellence really struggles, and then your net profit margin is under, still under pressure. The third pathway is essentially take some steps to become customer experience focused, but at the same time also take some measures, have some initiatives that will allow you to address the operational excellence. So this is like a step-by-step -step approach. So diagonally, move, you move from silo to become future ready. And many enterprises, either by choice or, or just by accident, are in that path. The fourth one, which is interesting, is do nothing. So stay as it is and probably die. But also the other option within that is do nothing but create a completely new enterprise. A digital part of your organization becomes a new enterprise as if it's a digital native. So they start from the scratch. They create their own digital processes. They have their own IT architecture, own IT platforms. So they are the digital natives. And many companies, particularly banks, have adopted this approach. They have created their own digital version of it, completely away from the, from the mother company. And they have successfully managed to do that. And in fact, one of the examples, the mother company then became part of that, transfer, that particular new entity. So there are various options you can take. But in general, what happens in many enterprises that we have seen, there is probably no clear path. So what happens is that some CEO will come around and say, actually, we want to focus on our customer experience. We want to become a customer champion. So all initiatives, CMO, CEO, everybody will try to drive the, digital, the customer experience uh, initiatives. Six months, nine months, and suddenly they see that actually my share price is going down, my operational excellence is struggling. So they suddenly move their direction and say, okay, we need to simplify our processes. We need to digi digitalize our back, end, back, end, back offices. And then the customer experience starts struggling again. Then there are many things that happen in between. As we have seen in the last presentation, they want to open a new digital uh, terminal, for example, or they want to acquire a new, acquire new business. So all these disruptions will force you to take different stances. So we had a very great, uh, workshop a couple of months back with one of the South Asian operators. They wanted to really understand where they stand today, so they wanted to do the maturity model. But we said that before you do that, let's try to find out where you are today. And so we asked all their CMOs, COOs, the C-suite, including CEO, to sit down and really lay down in the last 18 months all your major initiatives, what we are trying to achieve. Just plot on the simple diagram where those initi initiatives were taking you. Either they were taking you up down there or cross or in somewhere in between. So everybody individually sort of plotted their paths based on the 18 years of, 18 months of that projects. And then we put all that together. And the picture was surprising. 
you had a spaghetti. Some of the initiatives were like that, some of the co completely coming down. There was an operational excellence uh, initiative, but then there was customer experience initiative going other way around. Some of the initiatives were stopped in between without actually delivering anything, in fact, making it worse. And the CEO just realized that, he said, this was not what meant to happen. We had a strategy, we had some focus, we invested money, but actually, at the end of that period, we haven't really made any significant transformation. And the reason behind that was, even though there was a strategy, there was not strong governance and strong focus on where they wanted to head. And I think it allowed the different participants, CEOs, CMOs, to drive their own agenda. I'm sure that doesn't happen in your enterprises, but that's pretty common across, across other enterprises. So, th so that's really the vision and ambition that you need to have and you need to know where you are heading. But once you know that, it's, a, it's also very important to know where you stand today. And this is where the next uh, topic is about maturity gaps. So what we call is open digital maturity model. And it covers six main dimensions. And we believe that these dimensions cover entire transformation, include uh, from business to technology. So first one is about strategy and dynamism. So it's very important that you have clear vision. So as part of this maturity model, we focus on whether you have a strategy. Has it been well defined? Is it, has it been communicated across your enterprise? Is everybody knows about it, what it means to digital, what you are trying to achieve? Once you do that, do you have financial model to support that? Do you have investment that is aligned to that particular strategy? Is your business agile enough to address the challenges that are coming through dynamically as well as through number of other external factors that you may not have foreseen? The second one is quite important for traditional companies, digital talent, culture, and skills. Many traditional enterprises are re increasingly finding it difficult to attract digital talent, particularly the millennials. Millennials want to work on technologies that allow them to grow digital technologies. They want to collaborate. They want to work remotely. They want to have flexible hours. Traditionally, enterprises struggle to support those sort of things. So this is really the question about do you support agility? Do you have digital tools and technology that promote collaboration, that promote remote working, that promote sharing and productivity? Do you have ways of major, uh, learning and development? So do you really train your employees? Because retention is also one of the important part of that. In many traditional enterprises, people who are not necessarily digital native, how we are going to retain them, how we are going to upskill them. So do you have mechanisms to do all that really matters when it comes to digital talent, when it comes to digital maturity? The third one is about customer experience. Again, it's very well known. Everybody's customer experience champion. Most of the enterprises say that anyway. So really, we look at here, do you have way, ways of measuring that? Just by saying customer, we are customer experience champion doesn't really mean anything. Do you really measure that? Do you analyze the customer journey? Do you really see the customer pain points? Do you govern that experience across the board? Not, it's not only CMO who is responsible for customer experience. It's of everybody. So how you do that? Do you have that brand that actually the customer experience that delivers the brand vision? So these things, we look at the customer experience. Data centricity, again, very important. Everybody knows about it. But do you really manage your data in terms of both regulation, but also using the data to monetize, using your data to improve your customer experience, using data to simplify your back, back, back office processes? So that's really where we look at the data centricity part. The next part is quite important from the service innovation and optimized delivery. So there are two parts of that. In digital world, Everybody knows that you cannot do on your own. You need to have ability to partner with others, many from other industries, but also within your industry. So in order to do that, do you have ability to do that? Are you able to get the partners on board very quickly? Are you able to get their services into your products quickly? Are you able to consume the services from others and embed that into your products? So the, it requires different type of technology, different type of skills, but different type of business models. So are you able to support those business models is really key within that. Optimized delivery, very important in terms of having ability for you to have a joint agile delivery across your participant, but also within your enterprise. Ability to work with operations and development teams together to deliver those solutions is part of the optimized delivery. Technology leadership, here we look at the adoption of all digital technologies, big data, cloud, analytics, and all others. How are you, how are you adopting those 
what's your investment looks like on those technologies. But adopting technology on its own is not good enough. Are you able to deliver the business benefits? Are you able to do that governance that is required, which is efficient but not necessarily heavy? And this is very important from enterprise architecture perspective because when you are transforming at rapid scale, you need to have light governance, but it has to be efficient. So are you able to do that? Are you able to use digital technology, for example, like machine learning to simplify or in fact automate your operations? So these are the things that we look at uh, when we do the maturity model. So we believe that this six dimension really covers the digital maturity that for any enterprise across any industry, uh, we'll able to measure based on these six di different dimensions. So once you do that, then you'll be able to understand where you stand today, but you will be able to, able to see what the best in class looks like in, in, in your particular industry. And that will allow you to measure the opportunity in terms of making that particular transformation, what it in turns in terms of your net margin increase, in terms of your customer experience, NPS improvement. Now, in the next, chap next three things are really key for that. Once you know where you are, once you know your ambition, then how you are going to realize it. So there are three parts to that. And first part is really about empathy opportunities. So this is where we look at the customer as well as employee experience. So how you initiate those things. And good example, yesterday I was traveling from the Amsterdam airport again, and we took the bus from the airport, from the plane to go to the airport lounge. And in front of us there was a, essentially the luggage carrier. And it, it was windy. So and nobody realized, but the, the luggage carrier dropped one of the bags, and that bag just way off somewhere. And that driver continued to carry on because he didn't realize that he dropped one of the bags. And I don't know what happened to that poor bag and the poor customer who owned that bag. But when you start automating these things, customer experience and uh, essentially the focus on humanity as well as human experience is really key. As you start automating operations, looking, put, adding intelligence to your processes, I think the design thinking is going to be key factor to ensure that you deliver that experience that is really uh, focusing on the employee, but also a customer experiences. So in that particular example, you can see that the customer experience would be quite different because he lost the bag, nobody knows. Even the tracker has failed to track that because that bag is just not anywhere. It left the aeroplane, but it never landed anywhere in between. So how you design your operations, how you design your services to cover this sort of customer experience is really key. And the operation realization is really focusing on understanding the capabilities that you currently have and what capabilities you need to make that transition. Key result is really measuring your progress continuously, having your balanced digital scorecard that allows you to do that. So I'm going to quickly move forward if this allows me to do that. But uh, yeah, so essentially, we look at the gaps where you stand today, look at the capabilities that you need, and put together a roadmap planning that allows you to move that journey, focusing on the dimensions that are important to you in terms of whether you want to become ecosystem player or whether you want to become an omni-channel player. So we, we essentially look at the capabilities that are required, prioritize them, and then create a roadmap that is required for you to make that transformation. I talked about the design thinking, and this is a really important part increasingly for almost all enterprises focusing on understanding the customer experience, doing some essentially prototyping that experience and learning from that and testing it continuously rather than following the traditional approach is really key part of that. And it's getting more and more important as you start adding intelligence to your processes. So in summary, last one minute, this is our mastermind. Essentially, you have this model that allows you to define your vision and ambition. Then we got the maturity model that allows you to measure where you are. And then we have the digital operation realization and the design thinking that allows you to make that journey. I'll skip this. It's just an example how you do that. But these are three things that we are essentially using, the value stream from open groups. So when you once you start defining the initiatives and roadmap, we use the value stream to understand who are the stakeholders, what are the capabilities we are required, what are the KPIs that will deliver by that value stream. Again, we use the agile methodology to deliver that, but most importantly, we again use the open group business capability model to understand what 
capabilities you have and what you need in, in, in making that transformation. So in summary, these are the four key benefits that we believe that our digital mastermind brings in. First is about having the overarching vision and ambition, so you know where you are heading. Second is about using the roads as a driver for delivering that customer experience. Third is about prioritizing your initiatives using the value stream mapping, but also looking at the key financial indicators that will allow you to decide which initiatives you want to do and how you prioritize them. And fourth is really focusing on design thinking. Make sure you go focus on customer, but also your employee experience to make that digital transformation. So that's it really from me. Uh, I wish all the best for your digital transformation initiatives, and hopefully this was a useful exercise. Feel free to join our Open Doors community. It's again open, so anybody can join in, share your thoughts, share your experience, and learn from others. And thank you very much. Thank you. We do have a few questions, if you'd like to uh, take a seat, please. Thank you very much for that. We've heard about some of the activities in the uh, Open Roads community before, so it's good, it's good to get an update. So most of the questions are around the, the, um, the quadrant yes. that, you, that you showed. So um, uh, first question, um, is this framework applicable to the government sector? I believe so. If you look at the two major dimensions, customer experience, operational excellence, these are across any industry, including government. Mm. Because government, obviously, are under a lot of pressure now in the last seven years, they have to become operationally excellent. So they can use digital technology to simplify. And actually, only this start of this month, I was in Estonia, which is now completely digitized. They have the govern government in Estonia has 99% digitized all the processes that are used by citizens of Estonia. So you can see governments are actually following these sort of models quite effectively. Um, why should the four quadrants be mutually exclusive? They should not be. Right. So I guess the quadrant allow you to see where you are today. Mm -hmm. So that's really realization of what, where you stand today, but it also realization of where you want to head. Because in many enterprises, these things happen by accident. So they have essentially the experience I have, CMO will have some budget, CEO will have some budget, CEO has some budget, and they will focus on their own initiatives, which is again driving the enterprise towards the, towards the transformation. But if you have clear vision as an enterprise at the CEO level where you want to head, then you, you can focus on all the initiatives to ensure that they right, go in the right direction. Mm -hmm. So this is where the, dime, the four quarters really help. They are not mutually exclusive at all, but you can see the trend in terms of your net profit margin. Yeah. So where you head, I think the one of the important observation from that is really that just become a customer experience champion doesn't really make you operationally excellent. So, right. sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, where did the open digital maturity model originate? So this is really open doors uh, own development. So we work with number of operators. We work with some consultancy organization. So this is really our own model. So it does really essentially those six dimensions we believe that are covering the entire digital transformation. We had a lot of uh, insights and experience working with the operators. So we managed to run this ODA maturity model with three, four operators in Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. So we learned, we evolved, we modified the model to make sure that it is relevant and actually capturing the reality on the ground. So hopefully that answers that question. Okay. Yeah. That's in the open road. So slightly uh, different topic. What would you recommend of these options? Train existing resources in digital technologies or recruit digital talent or engage a digital consultancy? Um, and this is particularly from the perspective of a very large organization. I think the first two are certainly important. So obviously, you're not going to overnight, you want to get rid of the, all the experience people you got. So I think finding a right uh, pathfinder in your organization who are able to adapt to new technology or ad adapt to change, I think is critical. And these people will lead the organization in transforming that. Along with that mix of new talent, new digital culture, pe people who are digital native, mixing them together, I think is the way forward. Mm -hmm. So recruiting consultancy organization is part of it, but I think those two things are most critical ones. Right. 
In fact, the open groups just, just started a new uh, work group on digital uh, practitioners and the skills required and, and those things. So I think that's going to be play right, yeah, right into that. So work with telcos, Steve, and we found mm. that the job specifications that we currently have in our industry are nowhere re mm. relevant in the new world. Right. And as you know, in European countries particularly, people can actually say, this is my job spe specification, this is what exactly I will do. But in digital world, it doesn't really work like right. that. So there's a significant uh, change required in the way we do business in, term in terms of people. Okay. Uh, how do you deal with digital transformation and a legacy infrastructure? How, do, how does the quadrant help in that sense? So uh, if you are at the siloed and the, the supplier side, there are a number of things you could do. First thing, look at your capabilities as a core that you really, what, what it defines as you. So be a combination provider or a retailer or whoever that may be. What are the capabilities that can allow me to expose internally so that can we consume my customers, my employees seamlessly? Mm -hmm. Then look beyond your enterprise, look at those capabilities. That can they be consumed by others, like insurance provider, finance, re other organization, government? Can be they consume those, uh, those services? So you, from services perspective, as you start opening up and start becoming part of other ecosystems, it creates different business models. So that's one way of looking at it. Other way, look at the data. Again, look at the data. How can I use data to simplify my customer experience, simplify my operations? So that will improve you, increase your NPS, improve your margins, but it will also start expose, allow you to partner, partner with others. So these are sort of two areas that I think we'll start with. So this is where the integration really plays an important part. Integrating internally, but also externally is really essential in order to start that journey. Okay. Um, have you connected to the Business Relationship Management Institute? Um, this, uh, the, the person asking the question finds it Im an important link to uh, connect value streams and transformation initiatives. I think that's a really good question. I would like to have take the opportunity to meet the person who has the question. Yes. I think this is another area where we are still not 100% sure how you, how you join these two things. The value stream modeling, we sort of doing that, looking at the capabilities, but I think linking back to the business, defining the role of enterprise architect in this particular world is also, I think, another area we are still working on it and still any collaboration, any work will be really useful for us. Okay. There'll, be a, there'll be a chance because the person asking that is one of the speakers later in the morning. So uh, hopefully you can, uh, you can do that. So we, we are at the break. I'll just take, uh, just take one, more, one more question. Um, are you applying Rhodes principles to value stream development itself or only in technology solutions development to enable the Rhodes principles? No, it, it's for the value stream. That's really a key part of it because it's all about customer experience. I think technology, these are just capabilities that we look at. So the, from an experience perspective, the Rhodes really applic applies to the business as a whole. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Shekhar, thank you very much thank for you your much, presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.